Hey, this kid's got a diary. Another day, another journal entry. Today we're analyzing Greg Heffley and his many companions throughout the animated Diary of a Wimpy Kid trilogy. From the first film, to Roderick Rules, to Cabin Fever. Who should move on to the next grade, and who should probably be held back? And remember, this is a journal, not a diary. Welcome to Wicked Binge. This is Diary of a Wimpy Kid, good to evil. You probably know the drill by now, but in case you don't, we'll be starting with the most noble character and working our way down to the most Despicable. These characters are the good, and our gold medal of good has to go to Rowley Jefferson. Greg's mom describes Rowley in the first film as a great friend, and when you look at the totality of his actions over the three films, that is not a bad description of him. Rowley is Greg's friend through thick and thin, even though Greg isn't always the nicest of friends or a particularly good influence. It's not cheating, it's gaming the system. Rowley forgives him for everything and will stick with him to the very end. He's also unapologetically himself. Unlike Greg, who's obsessed with looking mature and being taken seriously, Rowley worries only about what makes him happy and not what others will think of him. Pop singer Joshi might appeal primarily to girls, but Rowley loves him and he doesn't care one bit about how others will perceive him because of it. Although his interests aren't always necessarily age appropriate, Rowley does exhibit elements of maturity that Greg so desperately wants himself. In the first film, when Greg pressures him to continue trick-or-treating on Halloween night, Rowley suggests they call it quits, highlighting Manny's sleepiness as a reason why. Which character would you say is the responsible one here? Overall, Rowley is the best friend that Greg could ask for, and exhibits the type of outlook on life that Greg himself should have. You can't be more positive than a character who is simply themselves, and that's why Rowley gets the gold medal. Next up, the silver medal of good has to go to Grandpa Heffley, appearing only in the second installment in voice by the late Ed Asner. Grandpa Heffley is Greg, Roderick, and Manny's grandpa. But I'm no fool. I know what's really going on. Like a lot of grandparents in animation, Grandpa Heffley exhibits and shares wisdom beyond any of the other characters in the series. He quickly catches on to the fact that Greg and Roderick are only staying with him because their parents forced them to do so. I've enjoyed every second of it. Even so, he still loves and admires his grandsons, seeing them as everything his children should be. He applauds them for spending time with each other and for being there when they need it most. When Greg allows Roderick to play with his band, during the talent show, despite him being grounded. Grandpa is the first to praise Greg for doing so. Though he isn't a major part of the trilogy, Grandpa remains one of the wisest and most kind-hearted characters to appear. And rounding out our top three, we have Greg's mom, Susan, who earns the bronze medal of good. The matriarchal figure of the Hefley household, Susan often acts as the voice of reason when Greg or the other family members are in dire straits. If Greg is in a rough spot in any of the three films, you can bet your bottom dollar that his mom will be there to point him in the right direction. Now, go. Go help your brother with the dishes. She's also pretty lenient, which you can't say about Greg's dad, who we'll get to later. She's quick to forgive people for their mistakes, but that doesn't mean she's some sort of pushover. Susan is still stern and disciplinary when the need arises. In a nutshell, she's whatever the situation needs her to be. But in every case, she's still as loving and caring as you would want a mother to be. Out of the main Heffley family members, Susan is probably the one who'd be the easiest to get along with, so it makes sense that she places higher than Greg and the others. Besides, who else here has their own currency based on them. Moving on to the youngest member of the family, Manny. Manny's biggest character flaw, as well as the reason he's relatively high on our list, both come down to the same reason. As he puts it himself, he's only three years old. I'm only three. Manny gets himself into a lot of messes and is a common source of trouble for the Hefleys and Greg especially. He doesn't like it when he doesn't get his way, which earns him the greed medal. With all of that being said, he is only a toddler, so you can't give him too much grief for not being a perfect individual. At his best, Manny is a loving and supportive brother who's always trying to help his family, even if his methods are sometimes far from ideal. As we said, Manny's age is his biggest weakness, but also his biggest strength, so it creates a bit of a problem when trying to place him
him on this list. Overall, however, we feel Manny has more positives than he has negatives. Sure, he creates his fair share of problems for his family, but that also holds for Greg and Roderick. And you can't exactly blame their ages for their mess-ups. Quite honestly, Manny might be the nicest and best-behaved member of the trio. Last, but certainly not least for our good tier, it's time to rank Greg's father, Frank Hefley. Kind of like we alluded to earlier when talking about Susan, Frank is the more stern and bossy parent in the Hefley home. We are trusting you to be responsible this weekend. He's not above sending his children to timeouts, even if it doesn't fit the crime in question. Frank is rather prone to overdo his reactions, a trait of his best scene in the third film, where he immediately starts to point fingers whenever things go missing. Beyond being a bit bossy, Frank is also not the greatest sibling himself. Unlike his sons, he rarely sees his brothers, much to the detriment of their relationship and the disappointment of his father. Despite those character flaws, however, Frank still embodies all of the the traits that you would want to see in a father figure. He's still there for all three of his sons and, much like Susan, can offer a voice of reason in times of hardship. He isn't a perfect dad, but then again, nobody in the Hefley household is perfect either. Now we've dealt with the good characters, so let's take a look at the characters who fall somewhere in between good and evil. This is the gray area. At long last, it's time to talk about the series protagonist, Greg Hefley. Some might say this seems like an odd place to put him, but let us explain. In the series, Greg is often caught in the middle of problems and issues. He's caught between childhood and adulthood, between wanting to do what he wants to do and what is right to do. With such an inner conflict, it's completely sensible to put Greg in the gray area. Make no mistake, Greg has made more than his fair share of mistakes. He can often take his friend Rowley for granted, he disobeys his parents on many occasions, and has no issues trying to look for his Christmas presents. He also suffers from not being the brightest kid as well, like the time he used one of Roderick's old school projects in play of his own. It's due to this that we have to give him the Darwin Medal. At the same time, however, Greg will usually do the right thing if he's pushed in that direction. When Rowley ate the cheese outside of the school, Greg said he did it himself and took all of the humiliation that came along with it. Those teenagers dared me to do it! And I did it! When Roderick was grounded and unable to compete in a talent show, Greg allowed him his spot back in his band, even when his parents chastised him for it. Greg is overall a good kid, but he is a bit naive, and his desire to fit in often clouds his judgment. He wants to be taken as seriously as possible, and it's this obsession with maturity that often leads him into conflict with the other characters, the most notable of all being Rowley. But at the end of the day, his desire to make things right with his friends and family outweighs his wish to fit in. And that's what keeps him from descending any lower on our list. He's a surprisingly complicated middle schooler to figure out, and he's one of two in our gray area. The other is none other than Fregley. To put it bluntly, Fregley is the honorary weird kid of the school. He does not appear to have any friends, but that doesn't stop him from trying. He constantly tries to start a friendship between him and Greg, but it never goes anywhere. You can be the church organist and I'll be the school hygienist. This is primarily because Fregley tends to share information with him that should probably be best left to himself. Whether it's a weird mole on his body or showing off his belly button, Frigley loves to ask strange questions even if they never result in anyone becoming his friend. Wanna finish building me? Really, it's his strangeness and sheer random personality that gets him tossed into the gray section. You never quite know what Fregley is going to do, as he's a tricky character to pin down. If that doesn't sound like a fellow who deserves to be in the gray, we don't know what does. And with the gray area wrapped up, it's time to look at the one character that we would consider to be evil. We only have one character left to look at, and surprise, surprise, our gold medal of evil goes to Roderick Hefley. Roderick is the typical mean, bully, older brother that you've seen in countless shows and movies and it's no shock that he gets the title of most evil. His mean streak also makes him the obvious earner of our wrath medal. If we were to examine his character, we would say that Roderick is what Greg could become if he continues to make poor choices in his life. This is evident by the fact that Roderick is often a bad influence on Greg. He gets him into a lot of the problems that he goes through in the movies, like throwing a house party when mom and dad are away, or giving him an old failed science project for his class. He's not the most active character in the series either often seen alone in his room or sleeping on the couch. So while we're here, now would be a good time to give him the sloth medal too. Roderick typically sees Greg as a pushover and tries to mold him into being more mature, which Greg then does to Rowley. The Hefley brothers are throwing this party together. Despite their differences, Greg and Roderick care deeply for one another and have a better relationship than their dad does with his brothers. Realistically speaking, Rowley isn't evil in the way a lot of characters
characters we put here are. At his worst, he's little more than a bully, and even when compared to other bullies in animation, there are definitely a lot worse out there. Still, someone in this franchise has to be the most evil, and in the Wimpy Kid universe, if anyone were to be the series antagonist, it would be Roderick. 